We're currently waiting on news if the L Word Generation Q has been renewed for a fourth season and I did want to talk about the epidemic that is going on with women loving women shows being cancelled or not even being made in the first place. So that's what we're going to talk about today because it just seems over the past year there has just been casualty after casualty of shows that particularly cater to us and they've just got one maybe two seasons and then it's all over. So why aren't many of these shows being made in the first place and why are they being cancelled when they are actually successful and catering to an audience that desperately needs representation. That's what we're going to talk about today, so let's get right into it. So for the purpose of this video, I am going to ignore things like bad writing, bad casting, bad acting, bad directing, bad anything, because let's be honest, if we're going to talk about shows like First Kill and Warrior or None that are on Netflix or even stuff that is on some other network channels, there is so much trash out there. Like there is so many awful, awful, awful Netflix shows that have bad writing. They're badly rated. They're not really that popular with the audience. So it's not like that should really weigh into it because really all these streaming and networks care about is money and whether you are subscribed. They're really not that bothered if they make a quality show. So for the purposes of this video, we're gonna ignore that because I don't think that it should be exclusively women loving women shows that need to be like these highbrow, well done things. I mean, obviously I would love that, but there's a lot of trash out there. And so we shouldn't hold them to some higher standard. But the main problem with all of these shows, it's something I've talked about extensively on my channel when it comes to the L word. I believe the main problem with these shows all comes down to the marketing, money, and men, the three M's, if you will. So I wanna first talk about marketing, and this does kind of just bleed into money and men. And the first thing is that let's look at First Kill and Warrior Nun. Those are pretty fresh cancellations. And especially First Kill, there's a bit more information out there because it's it's been out longer. And this show was in the top 10 in 83 countries. In the first 28 days, it was streamed over 100 million times and it was a successful show. Was it the best written? Was it the best acted? No, but it was good. It was entertaining. And it was a show that had a sapphic couple and it didn't have male gaze and all this other stuff. It had great cast. It was a good show. So why was it canceled when it was actually successful? Well, of course, Netflix is only concerned with bringing in new subscribers in the same way that Showtime is. And First Kill, when you look at like how much they spent on marketing, which was not a lot, it was extremely successful because if they put the money that they put into Heartstopper into First Kill, it would have absolutely shot the lights out. It would have been extremely successful because the main problem with all these women loving women shows is that no one fucking knows they're on because the shows are not marketed at all. Look at the L word this season. I mean, please can someone point me to an interview that anyone did? There was literally a handful of interviews that were done mainly by The Advocate that weren't marketed, put out. I saw one that Kate and Leisha did and it doesn't even have a thousand views. Like that is insane that they really put them in a bad position too because they interviewed them before the first episode had come out and then they didn't release the interview for weeks and weeks. So everything they said was moot. Like they weren't talking about anything that happened. We were were already on episode four and they weren't even talking about like what happened in one and two so the, there was so much potential that they could have done with bet and tina's wedding with any of the marketing this season and they completely ignored 
everything. They didn't even talk about Jennifer Beals and Laurel Holloman coming back for episodes nine and 10. So much potential just out the window because all those people who stopped watching when Jennifer Beals and Laurel Holloman weren't in like episodes three and four they didn't know that they were coming back they didn't know anything they didn't know they were going to get married because not all of the audience is online and knowing what's happening in like kind of the fandom so the to bring it back to what i was talking about before the marketing is just so trash for all these shows that nobody knows what's going on i know it's hard to imagine for people like us who are online a lot and we're very active in the fandoms and i know a lot of people that are big into the L word, watch Gentleman Jack and other people watch The Wilds and a lot of channels like other channels like Alex Shillington, Evelyn Dar, Amanda and Sapphic Underground and all these other ones, they all cover like lots of different shows. So you are at least aware like, oh, normally Evelyn covers Killing Eve and so I know she's gonna cover the L word or something. So you're at least aware of what's going on because we're online a decent amount. But people who are just casual audience members, I guarantee you, like if you ask some people, they didn't even know the fucking L word was back. They didn't even, they don't even know what Gen Q is. So not marketing it, you're just missing out on literally all the potential and why aren't these shows marketed is the reason that so many of them aren't made in the first place and it's because the people sitting in the rooms making the decisions about where the marketing money goes which shows are made which shows are given another season they are all well maybe not all but a large majority of them are men and they're normally straight men who just want to see men and women being extensions of men people's wives girlfriends sisters you know kids whatever it is and by not having women in the room by not having women loving women having any sort of representation in these streaming services networks whatever it is then of course we're not going to get anything made. A lot of these networks and shows don't even have enough LGBTQ people in the company to even, you know, run some of the accounts or just even know what do these demographics want in their shows. They they just really have, have no clue whatsoever. And if they're able to hire someone or start a show that those people can, you know, provide the information and, and make the shows themselves, then it it just ends up that they don't give them enough money to market the show and do anything. I mean, I've talked a lot about the Gen Q budgetary issues that, you know, they don't really have a lot of wiggle room and a lot of these shows don't. But if you even look from the the other complete side where you're looking at Marvel movies that have all the money in the world, It took them 20 movies to be able to put a female superhero in the title and that was a and the wasp for ant-man and the wasp and it wasn't till the 21st movie till it was actually a female superhero in the title alone you look at the other end you look at youtube if you think of like the most successful youtubers they're basically all men, especially if you take out the celebrities, which are, uh, you know, artificially boosted a lot of the time. But those male YouTubers are successful because they're getting male and female audiences. The female YouTubers, a lot of the big ones, their audiences are primarily female because so many men, I'm not saying all, but a large portion will not watch a female content creator. They won't watch a female show. They won't watch a show that has a woman as a lead. And that sort of bleeds all across the entertainment industry that now they see women's content as a niche because it could only possibly apply to women and it's like no like everybody can consume female content the same way that everybody is kind of forced to consume male content just even look at the way showtime treats the l word generation q like you look at their other shows dexter your honor those shows get so much money spent on them marketing wise there's interviews there's behind the scenes there's this there's that 
and the L word just gets absolutely nothing. And even if it does get a little bone thrown sometimes, like it's a trailer or something, it's always one little thing and that's it. And when female driven shows are given the money, are given the marketing, they absolutely do work. Look at Yellow Jackets, a female driven show. You know, one of the creators is a woman, a lot of the writers, the cast is nearly all women and that show did get marketing it did get it actually got a lot of critical acclaim too but it had a lot of things going for it and it was super successful look at like a movie like captain marvel the first marvel movie that was just the female superhero that's one of marvel's biggest earning movies of all time because we're all out here desperate for content i know that this has kind of bled between women loving women shows and just women's shows and entertainment in general but i do think it's kind of the same problem across the board you know we are given subpar substandard amount of shows movies even on youtube and we're supposed to just like be grateful for that when in reality we should be getting more shows we should be getting actual marketing for these shows so that it can find its audience how the hell can you put up a show like first kill or warrior none and you haven't even done any marketing at all like you would never know those shows came out unless you are online looking for that information and you could even find audiences that you would never think would be interested. There's a huge amount of straight women who watch the L word because they are desperate for female representation, especially with the kind of range of ages that you have on the L word that you're able to appeal to a lot of people. But if they don't know the show's there, how the hell are they gonna watch it? So it all boils down to female content is just treat it as something that is second class, is not as important, it's frivolous a lot of the time, men see it that way, but it is really important and I think women loving women shows are pushed even further down because it's not even like you can have a man in that show as a love interest, so it's treated even worse. What can we do to kind of do anything stop this try and get them to do more shows i mean obviously the biggest thing is to watch the shows support them talk about them on social media we we shouldn't have to do this but i mean anything can help we want as many shows as possible and to be on the air for as long as possible because even if a show isn't for you it will be representative to someone else. And of course, always give your opinion, always talk about your thoughts and feelings on a show, especially we could do with a lot more women loving women content creators. So if you feel really passionately about a show either way, whether you really like it or really don't like it, we wanna hear from you. Like we want more female women loving women content creators. So it would be great to keep as many shows as possible on the air and and to get new ones because even if a show isn't for you then it's for someone else so that's why i'm never behind like cancellations or anything like that i think that there's always room for an improvement and keeping a female driven or in the rarest of rare occasions a women loving women show on the air is normally always a good thing to me i mean of course there are some shows that can be like hurtful to the representation but 99% of the time, I think that it is a good thing because in some way, shape or form, it is going to be representative to someone out there. The last thing to say is of course, support women loving women, support women, watch their content, watch their movies, watch their television shows, of course, if you like them. If you do like them, like tell them you do, like, subscribe, all those things, especially the younger people who are just getting started, then they are the people that could be making content for us in the future. So I'd love to know what you guys think. I know this is a super complex issue and there's many, many reasons that all these shows are canceled, but I think a lot of it does boil down to money, marketing, and men. So 
If you could, it would really help me out if you would like this video. YouTube, for some reason, really cares about that at the moment. That's the thing they care about right now. So if you're not subscribed to, that would be really awesome. And you know, you're helping a woman loving woman out. So the kind of the whole point of this video. But let me know down in the comments what you think. And as always, make sure to stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.